What's happening guys? Episode 2 of the 10,000 Hours Project. As you can see behind me, you can tell by the sun, it is not 5 a.m. It's actually 10 a.m. right now. Looks like I've already given up on the 5 a.m. wake ups. So much for being disciplined. Now but on a serious note, I did wake up at 5 a.m. I ended up taking my first step out of bed this morning and oh boy did I feel it. I felt super sore, my muscles were just aching. So I think it's coming down to the fact that I had a 90 minute game on Tuesday night. We had a cup game up here. We did win, which is great. Then I had a recovery day Wednesday, which helped. Then yesterday, so in episode one of the 10K project, as you would have seen, I'd done some strength testing, which is basically a maximal strength session in itself. Plus it was my first time back in the gym lifting heavy since surgery four or five months ago now. You can tell my body hasn't been used to lifting heavy in a really long time. It's definitely given a shock to my system, but that's a challenge when you're starting out. You're definitely gonna hurt, okay? If you haven't done something that intense, you're definitely gonna hurt for a few days, but you gotta stick with it, gotta stick with it, and eventually, after a few sessions of doing the same thing, your body will start adjusting, and that's the whole concept of improvement. You gotta challenge yourself each and every day a little bit further, and your body will be forced to adapt. I was actually planning to do testing day two today, so I was actually gonna go out and do my sprinting, my power, speed, endurance, and technical testings, but that's probably not gonna happen. I wanna wait till I'm 100% for that, because I wanna be putting in maximum intensity. I wanna see how far I can go. I wanna see my body's limits as well. I think today's gonna be one of those days where I'm just gonna listen to my body, especially coming back from a surgery. I don't want to be pushing myself too much. In the worst case scenario is me re-injuring myself, doing another hernia and being out for another six months. Overall, I think it's fine though because the priority was my strength testing and in phase one of my program, I'm really just focusing on building that foundational strength. So I really don't have to be focusing too much on my speed for another month or two yet. Later, <laughs> later down the track in my training program. So the agenda for today, well, if you take a look at this, I'm filming episode two right now, and episode one isn't even out yet. I think yesterday's video was way too long. Um, I'm definitely gonna cut that in half. Less vloggy, more training. So please let me know in the comment section below and give me some feedback here. What do you guys wanna see? You wanna see more of vloggy style like episode one? Would you like to see more of the training sessions? You'd rather see the video shortened and me getting straight to the point? of the training sessions. Yeah, don't hesitate to let me know because not just for me, this is for you guys as well. Right, but considering I can't do my testing today, I think this is a great opportunity for me to show you how I count my calories. I mentioned it yesterday in episode one. Yeah, I think this would be a good chance to start counting my calories, especially heading into carb loading before my match on Saturday evening. 10 a.m., haven't had breakfast yet. I've been too busy editing episode one, trying to get this out to you guys. Before I head out for breakfast, let me show you guys how I count my calories, what app do I use, how do I find out how many calories I need, all that nutritional stuff. All right, let's get into the laptop. For my nutritious needs, I use a website called MyFitnessPal. I started using this in college to track my nutrition. The best thing about it, it's absolutely free to use. And you can calculate your BMI from it and it'll tell you approximately how many calories you need a day to achieve your own fitness goals, nutritious goals, based on the information you give. Now, if you don't want to carry your laptop everywhere with you, a great another tool is to have the app on your phone. So again, the app is free to use. It has a great little interface, really easy to use. Here you can put your weight, put an exercise in, you can track your food. It'll tell me how many calories, carbs, fats, and protein is in it. it tells you all the facts if you want to get into detail, the monosaturated, polysaturated, saturated fats, the amount of sodium, dietary fiber, protein, etc, etc. It's a great little app to use and it really helps me. I highly recommend you guys get this app to keep track of your nutritional needs. As you can see, my calorie count is 2,700 for the day. Now within those calories, you've got portion sizes for the three main macronutrients. And a macronutrient is the carbohydrate, fats, and proteins. So this is the estimated percentage of the consumption of each macronutrient during the day. So I should be having 40% carbohydrates today of the 2,700 calories, 30% of fat, and 30% of protein. 
and I really want the protein and carbs to be higher than the fat as the protein and carbohydrates are essential for the recovery process after training session. And I really want my body to be 100% ready to get back on the field as soon as possible. Here's the first meal of the day. I skipped out the process of making the food. I feel like it just takes up too much time. I'm just trying to keep this video shorter than the last one. But, so once again, I've just got my egg on toast with green beans for breakfast, plus my super berry protein shake as well. Now I'm gonna drink this first. Again, I mentioned it yesterday, it's a liquid form, so it goes straight to my muscles quicker. It skips the whole going through the stomach process. And I just really wanna kickstart the day with high amounts of protein, vitamins from the fruits, high amounts of carbs so the protein can travel, to my muscles, muscles can get some glycogen as well. Overall just speeds up the recovery process. It's nice and efficient with quality nutrition as well. All right, so I've added in my breakfast to the MyFitnessPal app. So 989 calories was contained in that breakfast. So obviously I've got the egg there, the wholemeal bread, two slices, cup of green beans, whey protein, banana, mixed berries, peach yogurt, and milk. So that means I've got 1,700 calories remaining. So whenever I feel aches or pain with the day of or the day after a game or an intense training session, I like to have magnesium supplements. And what this really does is assist with aches and pains in your joints or your muscles. I'm not recommending you having these supplements at all. I'm just showing you what I would have if I experienced muscle pains or muscle aches. Right, so the plan was around midday, I was gonna to go to the gym get some recovery work done, injury prevention, flexibility, stretching. So I don't finish work until 7 p.m. tonight. So I'm actually gonna do my injury prevention work, my foam rolling, stretching routine, after work at around 7.30 at the gym. And we'll talk about this and we'll go in depth with my routine. I'm really gonna show you what I do in my injury prevention, conditioning session, and how I recover from muscle pains. I'm gonna try to get some ball work done as well, just get some touches on the ball, even if it's just 500 juggles, um, some small ball master in the gym, you'll see it anyway. I've now got to get episode one out. I'm halfway through filming episode two at this point, so I'm currently stressed out at the moment. I'm not used to this daily vlogging thing. All right, so for lunch, we're staying consistent with the chicken, rice, and beans. Definitely be seeing a lot of rice and chicken in my meals. I'm just bringing out the Asian in me. So I've already logged it in my fitness tracker. 425 calories, chicken thigh, white rice and frozen green beans. So I've got 1,286 remaining. So I'm in the car now heading to work. I don't finish until 7 p.m. tonight. So next time you see me, we'll be at the gym doing our general conditioning session. All right, see you then. All right, so start off the session with a five minute bike ride just to get the blood flowing through my legs, get the lactic acid out that's been building up over the last couple of days. Following that, I do some dynamic stretches here. Again, really just trying to increase mobility and reduce the tightness. And you guys will be familiar with these dynamic stretches from your team training as well. This stretch here, I don't really have a name for it, but basically it does your hamstrings. And as I come down into the sitting position, it really opens up my groin and hip flexor region. And that's the region that's been really tight over the last couple of months due to my surgery. So I'm really just trying to focus on opening the hips and groin region. Now this stretch does my lower back and it opens up the lower abdominal region as well. I was definitely feeling really tight on this one, so I made sure I did 30 reps. As you can see here, as I turn over, this focuses on my glutes. Just quickly, I really highly recommend you guys adding in a general conditioning session to program, especially if you have a high volume training schedule. Here I'm using the resistance band, I'm just focusing on my flexibility here for my hamstrings. So 15 seconds in total, see how high I can get. Every five seconds, I'll raise my leg even higher. As you can see, my leg should be 90 degrees, so it's really tight at the moment. It's not quite reaching that 90 degrees that I'm looking for. I do the same for the left hand side. A strength day. My glutes got hit really hard. All these stretches you guys should know and you guys should be performing um, with your team training or your individual training. They're pretty basic and I really just hold them for 20 to 30 seconds each. General conditioning sessions really get overlooked, especially by the young players these days. You know, they always think, oh, I can recover really easy. But once you get older, it starts to become more important. So, I'd, so try and get started early on this.
here this stretch I'm doing my groin and you notice here as I'm turning it really opens that hip up so now I'm focusing on my hernia region from operation really trying to gain the mobility and reduce the tightness in that area I do the same for the left hand side I hold for 20 seconds for the groin area and the last 10 seconds I rotate to open up those hips again just another basic stretch for the hip flexor region just holding for 30 seconds on each leg Following this, we start to move on to the foam rolling section of the session. Again, this should be basic stuff here. I'm just focusing on my hamstrings, um, glutes. I'm just really working all my lower body here, really focusing on those niggly areas that are really tight. I try to go for 30 rolls on each muscular body part. And these type of sessions I try to do on a daily basis because I notice my mobility, my injury prevention, and overall general conditioning has been lacking over the last few years and I've never really focused on it. I honestly think foam rolling is great for your recovery, you know, especially if you're not a professional, you don't have a personal masseuse on site. And for us aspiring professionals, it's definitely our own personal masseuse. But yeah, I definitely think the foam roll will be your best friend after high intensity training days and your match days. And here I'm kind of just foam rolling on my foot as I get a little pain from all the training I do, not only feels really good, but it also indirectly works your calves and hamstrings. Now moving on to ankle stability, and you guys have noticed who have been following me over the last year or two, I always wear ankle guards during my training sessions or games. I really have weak ankles, so I'm doing my best to try and strengthen them. And here the balance board really helps your ankle and forces it out of its comfort zone. As you can see, my ankle is shaking once it hits the balance board because the balance board really provides that uneven surface that you're looking for. Now, this particular variation, I'm coming on from the side, so as if I'm changing direction in the game, so I want my ankle to be familiar with these movements. Now moving on to ball work. So this, I'm doing it at 50 or 60%. I don't want to be going 100% during my recovery session. I'm just trying to get some touches on the ball, basic pass and turn movements. I try to hit 8 to 10 each side, then I come back to the center and complete 20 juggles. Again, it's really nothing amazing, it's just to get some touches on the ball. And overall, it was a great one hour conditioning session. Add some whole milk sugar and alfredo to finish off my meals for the day. And pasta is a great source of carbohydrates as well, and especially considering I had brown pasta, so it's going to be low GI carbohydrates. It's going to stick in my body for most of tonight and hopefully for a few hours in the morning. And that's it for this video, guys. The battery is just about to run out, so I'll log down in the comments section everything I've done today my nutrition as well. I'll tell you if I've reached my calorie count or not. The way this completes day two of the 10,000 hours project. Today didn't really go as planned as I wanted to get some testing done, but that's okay. We've got to adjust, got some injury prevention done, and I feel a lot better ready for my game tomorrow. So I'll see you on tomorrow's vlog, guys. Catch you later. Have a good one.